Hello, this is Dr. Graham Reynolds from the American Institute for Cognitive Therapy, and today we're going to be talking about over-the-counter medications and uh, drugs that are often sold in convenience stores, smoke shops, and other places because there can be some significant risks associated with these drugs. So to start out, we're going to talk about what are referred to as triple C's and colloquially as purple drink. In essence, what's happening is that cough medications, either prescription cough medications or even over-the-counter medications, are being abused to get high. The popular one, the triple C's, comes from coracidin colon cough, which contains dextromethorphan, DXM, which can cause hallucinations and dissociative symptoms. This is a drug, and as you can see in the top right-hand corner of the slide, that's what it looks like. This is a drug that sold over the counter popular among teenagers as a way of getting high. They are abusing these drugs and there can be serious potential consequences. Another similar uh, cough medication that is being abused, people are also making what's called purple drink. This is taking prescription-based cough medicine containing codeine that is then mixed with soda, lemon lime soda, Sprite, things like that. People are drinking this and it can lead to euphoria, people feeling really great, but extremely high doses can lead to respiratory depression. I mean, essentially, you can overdose on the amount of opiates in this uh, cough medication. So while this may be seen or even popularized by music artists, this can also be incredibly problematic. There's some history of people having real abuse issues with uh, purple drink or triple C's. Club drugs. Very briefly talking about club drugs, this is referring to things like uh, Molly and Ecstasy. So the ongoing debate, Molly versus Ecstasy, MDMA is the chemical compound that's been popular in clubs, uh, dance music, techno, EDM, and it's been around since the 1990s. Originally, MDA, MDMA rather, was marketed as Ecstasy. It came in pill form, mixed with other fillers, and kind of made into a tablet. After the 1990s and having some real overdose issues, people drinking too much water, issues where it's messing with body temperature, uh, it kind of got a bad rap, I think, among people who were in the club scene. So ecstasy was seen as not being good because it had all these problems, but then they would say, well, we're going to get into pure MDMA, which we're calling Molly. Now, oftentimes what's being marketed as Molly, even these days, is not really MDMA. It could be other drugs that are just powder form. The difference between ecstasy and Molly, truly, is that ecstasy is in a tablet form and mixed with other things in order to make the tablet. Molly is seen as a more pure version because it's crystallized and put into gel caps and ingested that way. Um, Another club drug that can be abused is ketamine. Ketamine is an animal anesthetic, but can be used for its dissociating effects. Sometimes people are finding that these drugs can cause a lot of euphoria, but as with all of the drugs that we've talked about thus far and will continue to talk about, there can be very serious negative side effects to these things. Uh, interestingly for ketamine, the chemical compound, it's very similar to PCP which uh, doesn't have quite the same positive connotations that ketamine or MDMA, molly, ecstasy, these things have among the drug users. And now what we have uh, what I refer to as the smoke shop drugs. These are drugs that are being sold at uh, smoke shops, convenience stores, um, kind of like a, an over-the-counter supplement, but really in a non-regulated and often, unfortunately, dangerous way. So they will take things that are known substances that cause people to get high, but market them as not for human consumption. So this is where we get things like uh, potpourri, but it's really just plant matter sprayed with this chemical compound, marketed as potpourri or even incense, but then it's really designed to be smoked and ingested, and a lot of these drugs are unregulated and can cause serious, serious problems. Uh, other things that can be marketed as bath salts, uh, a few years ago, there was a big news story about somebody taking bath salts and attacking another person. And it wasn't truly bath salts, like the thing that you would put in your bathtub, but it was a drug marketed as that as a way to try to get around regulations. And people are using these unregulated and often unsupervised drugs to get high, and it can be very problematic. Um, 
Bath salts in particular, they are synthetic cathinones, a man-made chemical similar to a substance found in the cat plant native to East Africa. It's sort of like how cocaine is a derivative of coca leaves. Indigenous people in these countries where cat is grown might chew the leaves as a kind of boost, much like people in South America would chew coca leaves, not as a way of getting high, but it's a sort of stimulant effect. They have since synthesized that chemical compound, that structure, and marketed it as these bath salts. Sometimes this is even sold as MOLLE or MDMA, which we talked about in the previous slide. Another thing that is being sold in these smoke shops or convenience stores are synthetic marijuana, synthetic cannabinoids. Uh, marketed under the names of K2 or Spice. It was sort of originally pitched as, oh, this is a legal alternative to smoking marijuana. People can't be drug tested for these things. It's totally safe, which is not true. These drugs are not safe, and as a matter of fact, there's some very good evidence to suggest that they can be incredibly problematic in a lot of ways. Um, one thing in particular that uh, synthetic cannabinoids have been linked to is that incidence of first psychotic episodes. So people who ingest these things, smoke these things, thinking, oh, it's an alternative to marijuana, but it's legal, therefore it might be safe. Totally not true. And people who have genetic predisposition for things like schizophrenia or other psychotic disorders, smoking this can actually trigger those things and lead to irreversible changes that are lifelong and lasting. A third smoke shop drug, as I'm calling them, is Kratom. Kratom is a tropical evergreen tree from Southeast Asia. Uh, oftentimes people are chewing, drying and smoking, or as often as sold in these smoke shops, they're put into capsules or extracts. The effects of the drug vary. Uh, low doses seem like an opioid-like depressant, kind of slowing you down. Higher doses, you're getting people with euphoria. This also, though, can be incredibly problematic. People taking the drug can have adverse reactions, and then because it is plant-based, in February of 2018, there was actually a salmonella outbreak associated with kratom use in 20 different states in the United States. So these, re these unregulated drugs are being sold as if they are not for human consumption, with a sort of implication that they can be consumed, and then really rife for a lot of problems. And that is all we have today for uh, smoke shop drugs, club drugs. Next we will be talking about substance use disorder treatments. Thanks so much.